uh, welcome Ronnie to Art House Asia Film Festival. So the first question uh, I would like to uh, ask is, uh, how do you feel uh, to be here in this festival, and uh, what do you expect, or did you, uh, what do you look forward to in this particular festival? I mean, this is a very nicely curated small indie festival, which is very important, I think. Uh, in Calcutta, we have seen a sort of government-supported larger festival, but the kind of films which are shown and the, the care, I mean, they don't really care about filmmakers or the films they show and there is no market. So I think this is very important because uh, just now I saw a conference of sorts where uh, there's a discussion going on about producerial stuff and how filmmakers can raise money and uh, important things which are more in tune with uh, what is required you know otherwise what we see in usual other festivals is it's more of a PR exercise for the government uh, so I think this is really uh, really good and this is I think is the fourth year so I want to wish them all the best thank you thank you very much so uh uh, we would like to know more about uh, the, your film Cat Sticks, which was screened in the Kolkata Film Festival recently. So tell us uh, something more about your film. I mean, we started uh, the film in 2017. It took uh, around five months uh, to get to the first draft. Then the pre-production started and it was a long process. Then we started shooting, which is very quick. But the workshop for the actors, it took a long time because uh, all the actors were mostly trained actors. But even then they had to get the biology of a uh, using addict because the film revolves around, uh, you know, an ensemble cast of 13 brown sugar addicts and the consequences they have or they face on one rainy night in Calcutta. So to get the biology right, you know, uh, it took a long time and then uh, the editing process took a much longer time, about eight, nine months. And finally, we were premiered at the Slam Dance in 2019, where we won a jury award and uh, the whole of last year we were traveling with the film. It had played in numerous film festivals in America, then we showed in a couple of festivals in Europe. The last one was uh, at Tallinn Black Nights in Estonia. So, uh, till now, in India, we have only showed at Kolkata Film Festival. And the uh, way people waited in the rain that, that day, you know, that night, was incredible. I never thought that so many people would turn up. People were waiting on a very long queue for more than three hours to see the film. It was incredible. Great. It's, it's really encouraging to hear that. So, <coughs> sorry. So, uh, being an independent filmmaker, you have just started. So, what all are the hassles you have faced uh, in terms of maybe production or the funding and all? Uh, hassles in terms of production and funding. Fortunately and unfortunately, I didn't uh, face much okay. because I was a working artist for the last 12, 13 years, so I had a career going on. I was uh, experimenting with videos when some of my friends got in touch and said that, Ronnie, we like the stuff that you do and we like the stories that you tell about your friends. Would you want to make a film? And that's how it began. So there were people like Tanaji Das Gupta and uh, Shomo Kanti Devishwas and then Theodore Shetrasani who came on board and then they figured out the rest. My work was mostly to uh, get the HODs of every department and uh, you know how to get the film done mostly from the directorial perspective. I didn't really get into the producerial stuff, whether it's financing or distribution and other stuff. So for me it was a smooth ride, but I don't know if it's great because uh, when I'm trying to make my second film, I'm thinking about all of that. So let's see, I don't know, but hassles were 
um, during the production there were little hassles you know I was not told that okay you write a film with this kind of a budget I was told that you write the film that you want to make uh, so there was no budget in my mind when I wrote so there were many things you know the f it, 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 it rains throughout the film uh, which is a problem because if you I mean there was a huge aeroplane sequence where there is an aeroplane and then it's raining in that entire zone but it's all fake rain so you have to have the budget for that kind of uh, production you know to get the rain in such a big space and then it's happening all over the film uh, throughout so these were little things but uh, so we came out came out with you know other solutions like how to make like you know local rain machines with whatever resources we have so uh, so we made you know with different nozzles you know different kinds of rains uh, how you can do it with a smaller team uh, yeah and uh, otherwise uh, distributing the film in India there was no hassle because we because we didn't even try we knew that this film is not going to be distributed in a domestic theatrical market so we we were aware of what we were looking at you know and also the thing is that something like a film has its own life uh, it doesn't matter if it's not seen uh, right away I know that the film will be seen I know that you know in some time it'll have its life it's it's not a big deal so uh, what do you think the, the advent of the OTT platforms and Netflix and Hotstars and <coughs> Amazons has it has it helped the cause of the independent filmmakers as such? No, no, not at all, not at all. It's it's a uh, it's the same thing which happened during the TV boom when TV happened and everybody was jumping into making content for TV. It's the same thing. All these people who are running these OTT platforms, I don't know, but uh, the kind of content which has been put out is horrible. And there is, I mean, bad work is being made in abundance. There is no quality control. You don't know uh, which, what to see. So, um, I don't know. I really don't know. Because for me, it's just not about the distribution. For me, uh, for me, what is important is the role any gatekeeper may have at, at some point uh, where they are fighting to show good work. Say something like, uh, something like a museum, what they do is there is a strict uh, curation. Uh, but if you look at the OTT platforms today, uh, um, it's, it's very unfortunate. It's really sad what it has come to. It's horrible content. And as I said, you know, bad work is being made in abundance. We, we have to wait and see. Uh, we have to wait and see uh, where it goes. Because right now, if you look at all the best films on the last five years, there's not a single film which is on Netflix or Amazon which is worth watching right now, you know. So you look at all the winners of all the big festivals in the last five years. None of them have made it to Netflix or Amazon. None of them. It's only the blockbusters and you know, extremely you know like big celebrated Hollywood directors or Indian directors, and it's the same. The stuff that you see theatrically is the same stuff you you see online on OTT platform. So it's kind of a dumping place, you know. Right. So yeah, that's the thing. So uh, what do you think is the real issue that is plaguing the Bengali film industry as such? Because it's not. It, it, it is, is it losing the global appeal uh, if it had once upon a time? <laughs> because everyone gets uh, gets nostalgic about what it used to be, but nobody is trying to trying to ask what next. So I think uh, I think I, I look at it from a from a certain different perspective. I think that the the euphoria of. Uh, Bengali independent cinema, which happened mostly in the 60s and you know, it, it went on till the 70s. 60s it was huge because you know, people like Chotojitra etc. were winning back to back awards in Venice and Cannes and Berlin and so uh, then the 80s was uh, completely silent, 90s was also very silent 
uh, other than one or two films, yeah, one film of Ritu Porno. Other than that, I mean, nothing much has happened, but right now it's coming back, I think, you know. There are films made in Bangla which are being shown in Berlin, which are being shown in uh, Rotterdam, you know, which are being shown in other film festivals in, in places like Venice. So I think it's coming back. But also the thing is, it shouldn't be a fight between what happened in the 60s and 70s and today. I think we have to find, uh, we have to liberate ourselves from this burden. Uh, you know, we have to look beyond this nostalgia and we have to be true to uh, what we really can and what we can do. I mean, if we are willing to keep, I mean, I want to, I want to be an eternal student. Uh, for me, I, I am a student of cinema, I'm a student of art, I want to keep learning. But uh, I am in this not to fight against anyone. I am here to do things that I enjoy. Tomorrow if I get bored, I'll, I'll probably study sculpture or glass or something, I'll quit filmmaking. So for me, it's not so much about who champions my work. For me, it's about surviving another year. Surviving, you know, if I don't work, if I don't make work, I will not exist. So for me, that is the challenge, to not get bored. What happens with it is something else, of course, as it's it's the job of the artist to protect your work or give the work some sort of shape or sense or context. But uh, I'm not very sure about people championing our work. I think, I think that, say for example, a country like Japan, they consume and produce themselves. Say, Japan produces and consumes their own work uh, unlike any other Asian country, we always have to depend on other people, other festivals, other museums, so on and so forth. So for example, Museum of Modern Art, they have shown two films from India in the last 10 years. Huh? And both these films are films which have been championed by European festivals. So I don't know that what is the role of the museum today. I don't know what is the role of the festival today. So all the, all the, you know, all the big champions of the old world are crumbling and I can see them crumbling all in front of me. So what is going to happen is something that people today have to create. What it's going to be, I don't know. But I'm also not interested in that. I'm interested in making my own work. Right. The last question I would ask, uh, when do you get to see Cat Sticks apart from the festival like Please. So there, there are a few ODD platforms uh, uh, who are interested. Uh, so there is this ODD platform which, which has a policy of changing one film every day. So they make, uh, they keep 30 films in a month. So some of uh, them are interested. So let's see. Uh, and as I said, you know, I mean, it will come up. I mean, you can't really, you know. Uh, I mean, film has its own life. It it does come out. So I'm not, I'm not very greedy about that. As I said, I'm interested to like keep, keep working, and we'll see where it goes. So thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. And give me a uh, precious time. Thank you very much. Thank you.